thought this was a geisha hotspot. Where am I? Maybe in here? No? Or down this way? No? Where are they? I think I am a little bit lost amongst these Edo style buildings, but I'll get back to you on where exactly I am right now. This is the ultimate three day Kyoto itinerary that you need to plan your trip. Let's rewind it back and we'll show you everything on Kyoto. So beautiful. Kiyu Mizudera, if there's one temple you need to visit here in Kyoto, it is this one with this incredible view right behind me. This is undoubtedly one of the most iconic temples in Kyoto that's perched on the edge of a picturesque mountain. It blew my mind that this temple was founded in 780 AD, making it over 1,200 years old. Climb onto the viewing platform and soak in breathtaking views and then go for a stroll around the grounds. Just outside Kiyomizadera, you can eat your way through Ninenzaka and Sanenzaka, the charming little laneways dotted with Edo houses leading up to the temple. Look what we just found, roasted chestnut soft serve. Oh my God. It looks so good. You can spend like half a day alone just looking at all the different sweets, trying them out. <laughs> this is my very first time trying a cold pickled cucumber. <laughs> kind of refreshing. <laughs> While you're in Ninenzaka, don't miss the world's only Starbucks built into an Edo house where you can eat and drink on tatami. It's the most unassuming Starbucks you'll ever come across. Blink and you'll miss it. There's no evident signage and it blends in with all the other buildings. The style is so very Japanese, you'll almost feel like you stumbled into someone's house. Oh my god, that mango is so good. Mm. Starbucks in Japan is the best. This is definitely a first experience for us, having Starbucks on tatami mats in this Edo style building. I love it. Yasaka Shrine. This is another beauty of Kyoto that you have to come and check out and fit into your itinerary. Let us take you on a stroll inside. Yasaka Shrine is an easy 10 minute walk from Ninenzaka. It's also known as Gion Shrine and it's believed to be dated as far back as 656 AD. I simply love the design of this stage. I think it's like a stage or a pagoda. I love how they've layered the lanterns and it makes it look different to some of the other temples. So to confirm, it is a dance stage and the lanterns are the names of the local businesses who have donated to the temple. While you're at Yasaka Shrine, be sure to head to the back and check out Maruyama Park. It is a beautiful stroll around. I can see that there's like a stalk or something on the rock. It's really so still. still, it actually looks like a sculpture on top of the rock. <laughs> but pretty sure that's a real bird. Now that we're all caught up and I've got my bearings, finally we are in Gion. This is a gorgeous place to explore if you want to get a little feel of old Kyoto. Gion is an old entertainment area. Today you'll find an abundance of buzzing bars and lively eateries. It's also one of the most exclusive and well-known places in Japan to find geishas. We didn't spot any while we were there, but if you do happen to come across them, make sure to be respectful and don't try to take photos. These buildings are so nice. I feel like I'm back in like old Kyoto. Three days in Kyoto wouldn't be complete without a visit to Kichi Kichi Omurais. Honestly, one of the best nights we've had in Japan. This is the man, the legend himself. You've probably seen this place on the internet or on social media. It went viral through the quirky and funny chef Motomuro himself and his art of making a silky smooth omelette which he slices open with a knife. Ooh. <laughs> it just makes you drool watching it pour over the rice. Your night will end by belting out the Happy Happy Omurai song and you'll whip out omelette moves you never knew you had. I guarantee you'll leave this place with a belly full of omurais and laughs. <laughs> You do need to make sure to book this restaurant well in advance because it is pretty much a viral sensation and it gets very busy. Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Bye! I'm sad to leave. The best way to get around Kyoto is by renting a bike and you can rent one of these in so many places and it's electric too which makes life a whole lot easier for lazy people like me. Riding the bike around Kyoto is super easy. They've got lots of like bike friendly paths that you can use, which you can see like right here. And navigating around is easy when you have like Google Maps or just a map that the bike provider even gives you. 
They're very helpful with showing you where the free parkings are or the paid parkings. Something to note. Start your second day of adventures with one of the most popular and Instagrammable Kyoto attractions, Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. We're smack bang in the middle of Arashiyama's bamboo forest and it is so stunning. They're unbelievable how tall they are, how many there is. So nice. When you're done exploring the bamboo forest, stroll over to restaurant Arashiyama where you can feast on the most delicious shabu shabu made up of fresh seasonal ingredients. Mmm, oh my goodness, so good. And this delicious meal with some yummy dango. Welcome to the Sagano Romantic Train. After a hearty and delicious meal, make your way to catch the Sagano Romantic Train. It's a special sightseeing train that takes you through the mountains and along Hosogawa River. It's a classic and open carriage train that allows for incredible views, especially during the spring and autumn season. After one of the most scenic train rides in Japan, we'll end the day at this next place, which is an absolute must for your Kyoto itinerary. King Kakuji Temple. Now this is a one-of-a-kind temple that you absolutely must put on your Kyoto itinerary. You would have seen this temple. It's probably one of the most recognizable temples in the world with its shiny gold pavilion and Zen garden surrounding it. The pavilion is two stories high with the top two levels covered in gold. And if you're wondering, yes, technically it is real gold. The exterior is covered in real gold leaves. I wonder how much that is worth. As you stroll around the gorgeous gardens, you'll come across yummy snack stores, omamori stores, aka charms for good luck luck, as well as places to make wishes like the coin throwing challenge. It's really interesting, you have to actually throw coins into the bucket and I believe your wishes will come true if you do get it in. Give it a go. Gonna have a go. Here's a little tip. If you're looking for a modern and super aesthetic hotel in Kyoto, we couldn't recommend Mikuo Hotel Kyoto Station highly enough. It's a new hotel with eye-catching designs with hints of traditional Japanese themes. So cool. Around the hotel, they have these like moss features in the restaurant. And yeah, and it look, just looks so stunning. You know it. It's time for a room tour. We're staying inside the privilege room. Come in and let me give you a tour. Come have a look, guys. Come take a look at this view. You've got the mountains in the background. Beautiful view to wake up to. This is the first time I've ever experienced this. They give you male and female skincare kits. How cool is that? While you're here, you must try the dinner set menu at Trattoria M Kyoto. Which is an Italian restaurant inside Mercure and the surroundings are just absolutely beautiful. Everything tasted so fresh and delicious, made from the highest quality ingredients sourced locally to create Kyoto style Italian dishes. We promise you will not be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to Fushimi Inari, the iconic gates of Kyoto. Let's check it out. One of the bucket list things to do in Kyoto is to walk beneath these famous Tori gates and follow them through the trail as you make your way up the mountain. We were told there are over a thousand Tori gates and the number continues to grow. So Fushimi Inari is humongous and it keeps going up the mountain and our guide has told us it takes about two hours to complete to get to the very top, which is a lot, a lot of stairs and gates to get through. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to the top because it is a long trek, but we've always wondered what it's like up there. One day, along the way, you'll find lots of pockets of space between the gates for photo ops with different shrines, resting spots, and even small eateries. The further in you go, the less crowded it gets, making it more serene and ideal for picture taking. This oak tree is very, very special. You can see the roots are actually showing above ground and they're saying it's actually still alive. So a lot of local residents and people that come here rub the actual roots here for extra strength, extra protection, good health. 
because of the way it actually has grown here. All the walking and climbing will definitely work up some hunger, so let's hit up the next place that'll get you drooling. Eat your way through Nishiki Market. There is so much delicious street food here. You've got to try. The unagi, the, this is eel, is super, super soft, and that sweet glaze is unbelievable. Believe that all 390 yen. When you're at Nishiki Market, you have to try Dayasu oysters. I swear on my life, these are the best oysters we have ever had, and they will blow your mind. Our oysters have arrived, and they look so good. Look how plump this one looks. Unbelievably fresh, no sourness at all, a little hint of sweetness, wow, so, so yummy. After all that yummy snacking, let's head over to the next place. Right behind me is Higashi Honganji Temple. Now, this is an underrated temple right next to Kyoto Station. It's a hidden little gem. Actually, it's not so little, it's pretty big because it looks epic from the outside. So, let's take you guys inside for a look. Higashi Hongaji is divided into two great halls. One is the Founders Hall and the other is Amida Hall. Both are so grand and breathtaking inside. The history of the temple is interesting, so if you have time, be sure to look it up. It is seriously impressive. It is so big when you walk in and the main sort of like I guess temple building connects to this side one through a bridge it looks amazing absolutely come and check it out when you're in Kyoto now let's take a short walk to Kyoto station now you might be thinking guys why are you making us explore a train station on our itinerary well believe me when I say this one is absolutely worthy for your Kyoto itinerary one thing we do recommend is popping by at night it is a vibe you'll be awed by the sheer grandeur and raw design of the place as you make your way up the escalators spend some time admiring the epic set of stairs that light up with imagery and animations before making your way up to the top and roam through the amazing glass skywalk to admire the station from above. We use Clue throughout our travels in Japan to get the best prices on entry tickets, which helped us save a ton of time avoiding ticket queues. They also work with tour companies that can take you around like we had in Kyoto with Limon, who took us on the Sagana Romantic Train, Arashiyama and Fushimi Inari. See the description below for the best Kyoto attractions on Kluke. And that brings our three-day Kyoto itinerary to a close. We hope it's given you lots of ideas and gets you excited for your Japan trip. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and make sure to subscribe to our channel as we have more Japan itineraries coming up. So stay Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.